This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, specifically another Simplified World Chalice combo tutorial video. The video is where I take two to three card interactions, don't add any other variables to them, and show you what you can do to basically hard code these combos into your memory as shortcuts to get you to specific points in your combo sequence, which are points where you can then start taking it freely on forward of your own fruition, essentially, because many things will change after you yield yourself some draws. But basically what I'm trying to get you to is a simplified way to understand how to get to the middle of your combo sequence, which is an acceptable point to basically start going off on your own from there. Now, the middle ground that I'm going to be trying to get you to is usually just the point where Ningirsu is summoned and you draw your two to three cards or it's the point immediately afterwards if the combo is obviously extendable in some advantageous way past the Ningirsu, but ending boards are definitely not something we really focus on in these videos because it's very subject to specificity and things like that, and ultimately those are best left for like dual videos or whatever that I do with this deck because it's very nitpicky and very niche what cards could yield what sort of plays. But so for this video I'm going to be showing you a simple two card combo of Gofu the Vague Shadow plus World Legacy World Chalice. So it is a two card combo, I'm not going to be looking at what any of the other three cards in your hand are for this starting sequence, but what this card combo does essentially is it allows you to get two draws off Ningirsu, it's kind of hard to push it to three without just having another monster in your hand, so keep that in mind, you can push it up to three draws, but for just these two cards and taking no other factors into account, you are going to be getting two draws off Ningirsu, but it does yield you a plus three at minimum because you are going to be taking these two cards and turning it into three on board and then two cards that you drew. But we're also going to be able to take it a little bit farther than the Ningirsu in this instance because it's just good for the combo sequence. But so we're deviating from Venus for a bit because Gofu is a very you know strong starter card for this deck. Uh, it's definitely got its handicaps over Venus because of the fact that you don't get normal monsters, meaning you can't make Imduk. So there's definitely some handicaps that do exist, but ultimately they are things that with smart play structuring you can get around. So anyway, without further ado, let us just start doing this combo sequence. So the first step is obviously going to be to special summon your Gofu, and then you're going to special summon your two tokens off of the Gofu. Now you can't tribute the tokens for tributes, for uh, for like tribute summons and things like that, but you can tribute the Gofu. So you're going to tribute the Gofu to normal summon your World Legacy World Chalice. Now from here, World Legacy World Chalice does not match with any of these other cards here in terms of their type, but they do match in attribute. So you're going to have to link with one of your tokens into a Link Spider. So this is just to get the dark attribute out of the way because you're going to be making your Eeb here uh, using the World Legacy World Chalice and the Link Spider so that you can trigger World Legacy World Chalice's grave effect because it was Tribute Summoned. So you will link with the Link Spider and the World Legacy World Chalice into Eeb, the World Chalice Priestess, and then your World Legacy World Chalice will trigger, allowing you to summon two cards from your deck. So we're going to special summon a Beckoned by the World Chalice. It doesn't necessarily have to be Beckoned. This is just the vanilla that I run in my deck. Uh, you could do any of the World Chalice vanillas, essentially, but it does have to be a vanilla. And then special summon your Lee, the World Chalice Fairy. And then Lee's effect is going to trigger to add a card to your hand. And the best card to add in this situation is going to be World Chalice Guard Dragon. Because Guard Dragon by itself, one, is a form of protection for your combo sequence, and two, is going to yield you additional cards on top of just itself as a body because it brings cards back from your graveyard. So, with that considered, what we're going to be doing now is that we are going to be going into Aurum, the World Chalice Blade Master, and we're going to do that with our Beckoned and our Eeb, the World Chalice Priestess. I should note that you specifically need to summon these cards in this order. Uh, you need to put the Lee in the middle so that Aurum can be pointing to it. Um, well, it doesn't need to be necessarily Lee, but you need to have one of your cards in the zone that Aurum is going to be pointing to when you make it so that you can revive the Eeb in some capacity. But So you're going to link with Eeb and Beckoned by the World Chalice into Aurum the World Chalice Blade Master. Now from here you're going to be able to use Aurum's effect and you're going to be able to pop your Lee and bring back your Eeb. So from here you've gotten the Eeb back, you've got it out of the extra monster zone where it was pointing to two useless areas. Now you've got it here pointing where it can actually do some actual work. Now from here, 
we're trying to make the Ningirsu, and so without knowing what these three cards are, we're kind of starved for resources in terms of what we can do to make Ningirsu to draw three, but we can do it in an effective way to make it draw two, while also yielding a good Firewall Dragon setup. So what we're going to do is that we are going to actually use Lee's Graveyard effect, and we are going to send the World Chalice Guard Dragon from our hand to the graveyard to add Lee to our hand. Now we're doing this specifically because we want to be able to construct Chain Links when we make Ningirsu, uh, we want to be able to do that so that we can dodge things like Ash Blossom or things like that. Because at this point, no like things outside of World Legacy World Chalice were like things that could trigger Ash Blossom um, to like negate it. So like you just you want to be cautious with that. So we'll use the World Chalice Guard Dragon's Graveyard effect, banishing it to special summon the Beckon by the World Chalice back to the zone that the Eeb points to. And then what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to link with this into our Imduk for the first time. So. We're not actually going to be using this for additional normal summons, uh, sadly. I mean, you can if you're expanding upon this combo with other cards in your hand, but for this specific combo, it's not necessarily a factor. So from here, what we've got is we've got this situation where we've got a bunch of things on the field. We can't really do anything with this token in forms of making another Imduk, which is upsetting, because Imduk says it's an, a normal monster is a requirement except a token, so that kind of sucks. But, what we do have the ability to do, is we have the ability to use Aurum and Imduk here, and we have that ability to link up into a Link 3 where the Ib is pointing. So we're going to link into Ningirsu the World Chalice Warrior. Now from here, you're going to construct your Chain Links with Ningirsu being Chain Link 1, and your Imduk and or your Aurum being Chain Link 2. And so that will allow you to special summon a card from your hand. So you'll special summon the Lee that you added back, and then from there, your Ningir, your uh, your <laughs> I'm stumbling over my words. Your Ningirsu will draw you two cards. So now you're back up to five cards in hand, and you have gotten these cards on your field. Now from here, what you have the ability to do is, since we still have this token left over, this combo can actually be continued without really necessarily requiring anything specific in your hand at all. Um, there's there's a few things that could change things. You do kind of require a monster in your hand to continue further on from this point. But there are things that you can change going forward. But so the next step to continue this combo forward is going to be to link with Ningirsu and Lee the World Chalice Fairy, and you're going to link those into Firewall Dragon. And then from here, you still got this token left over, so you're going to link with the token, and you're going to link into a Link Spider in your open extra monster zone. So now you've got Firewall Dragon being co-link pointed to by Link Spider, and it is also pointing to those as well. So the Firewall Dragon's effect is live for two cards. So essentially, that's where you end at this point without taking any other factors into account, and that's what makes it actually really strong and really cool, is that you can get an Ingearsu to draw you two cards, you have your Firewall Dragon completely set up and ready to go. Uh, you've already burned Lee's Graveyard Effect, which is kind of, you know, kind of sucks, but at the same time, it did the work that it needed to do by putting the Guard Dragon in the graveyard after getting a search for an extra card, so it did everything that we were requiring from it. Now, you started with two cards being Gofu in the World Legacy World Chalice, you end with a two card draw and then three monsters on the field, so you do have a plus three at minimum, but because Firewall Dragon can at any point add two cards from your graveyard back to your hand, it is essentially a plus five, because you could easily just say Firewall Dragon effect and add two cards from your graveyard to your hand, putting you up to seven cards in hand, two of which being monsters that could be combo pieces. Now, the neat thing about this specific combo, and the Gofu combos in general, is that they do not require Venus, and they do not require Brilliant Fusion, and because in this specific combo we summoned Imduk but we did not gain its additional normal summon effect, if you drew Brilliant Fusion off of these two cards or had it in your hand or whatever, you can activate Brilliant Fusion, sending your Lazuli to Grave to add Beckon back to your hand or whatever vanilla you used, and that essentially gives you a combo extension as well because you can gain an additional normal summon for a card out of your hand if you need to, you put a Serif Knight on the field which can be a link material, you get a card from your graveyard back to the, your hand in form of the vanilla being added back off of Gym Knight Lazuli, there's a lot of different factors that go into that. As well as that, is that because of your accessibility into Firewall Dragon being able to add back Lee to your hand and being able to summon it freely because of the way that the World Chalice and the Firewall Dragon's effect structure, is that at any point you could draw something like Transmodify in your opening hand or off of the two cards off Ningir, so you could draw Brilliant Fusion or Transmodify in this instance as extenders, and you'd be able to put Lee back on the board and then Transmodify it into a Venus and then go from there with Shine Balls if you're playing it in your deck. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of what you can dig into 
post Nin Girsu. Because a lot of the things with the Venus combos that I don't necessarily like is that if you start with Venus, then you aren't really digging for much outside of the few really good extenders that are left in your deck, but you're more of digging towards, you know, in-game options like D-barriers or strikes if you're playing those, hand traps or whatever. Whereas with this combo, with the Gofu combos, you could be digging into really powerful extenders as well to keep yourself going in the form of Brilliant Fusion or Transmodify or things like that. There's a lot of things that keep you going in this specific combo sequence. But anyway, that's all I really wanted to talk about for this video. I'll be doing some more Gofu combos later and then I'll start branching into the three card combos that start getting you into extra links and things like that with both Gofu and Venus, maybe some Rescue Rabbit combos, stuff like that. So if you're liking these videos, then definitely let me know. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Drop a like if you want to see more. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And links as always are in the description to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support my ability to continue creating content directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway for some significant amounts of Yu-Gi-Oh! product as well as some other rewards that are included as well. So, special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that has currently supported me on Patreon this month. You help out a lot more than you may know and you have my eternal gratitude so with that said as i've already said thanks for watching thanks for your time and as usual guys take care i will see you in the next video